I'm Megan Hine, wilderness guide, survivalist, producer, and scout ambassador. And I'm here today with Miles and Shanti, who are going to teach me how to survive. For this activity, you'll need permanent markers. We need tin foil, a tea light, a light, paracord, metal tins, a tape, and a bowl of water. So what's the first item that's going to go in your tin? Pencils. Pencils. And what can we use the pencils for? We can draw on the mountains. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, so if you're lost in the mountains, you could use it to write messages or for parties coming behind you if you're on a secret mission. You can use it if you shave, get a knife and shave them down. You can make a start making a fire. You've got tinder and kindling for your fire right there. What's the next item? We've got tea light. Tea light. And what can we use the tea light for? Could we use it so we can see where we're going if it's dark? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you've got a light source right there. Really important when it gets dark. It's a brilliant like for, for starting a fire. If, you, if you've got your lighter, you can light the candle and put it underneath your tinder and your kindling. And if it's a little bit damp, the candle will start drying it out and, uh, and set it alight. So brilliant for, for lots of different purposes. You can use it, the wax for waterproofing stuff as well. What else have we got? The marker. Yeah, what can we use what can we use the markers for? So you could like make notes of where you're going because so you don't get lost. Yeah, so like permanent markers are brilliant because they're they're waterproof as well. So leaving a trail for somebody to help find you or leaving little notes uh, for other people or for yourself uh, as well is absolutely brilliant. I always travel with them um, with a permanent marker. It's just it's, they're just so handy for marking up your kit and equipment so you don't lose it as well. Absolutely brilliant. What else have we got? Tape. Yeah, electrical tape. Why is electrical tape good for our survival tips? For sticks, a very unique uh, Yeah, so for, for fixing things, so sticking things together. It's, it's waterproof as well, which is brilliant. Whenever, wherever I go in the world, whether it's jungles or deserts or into the mountains, I always carry either electrical tape or duct tape with me. And I, I've actually used it uh, when somebody broke their leg. Um, but I found a, a long stick and managed to splint their leg by using the tape. Um, it's so it's got so many so many diverse uses. It's really a bit. It goes everywhere with me. Is there anything else? What have we What have we forgotten? Light. Lighter. Yeah. Yeah. So try trying to make fire in the wild if you don't have a lighter is really hard. It's all like rubbing sticks and things together. So survival is about opportunity and it's also about conserving energy. So if we've got a lighter, we don't have to burn lots of energy trying to rub sticks together. So lighter, absolutely brilliant. Really handy bit of kit. Um, what else? Is there anything left? I to use to fill from um, a catch of soil something and then a catch of light. Yeah, so using reflection. So if we were stuck here in the mountains in Snowdonia and we were out and we were wanting to signal for help and we didn't have any other method, the tin foil, you can catch the eye of the pilot by reflecting the sun. You could you use it to cook? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so cooking with it as well. Uh, if you've caught a fish in the lake, you could wrap it in the tin foil and cook it on the fire, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> There's one more thing, isn't there, I think you've got. So we've got we've got the paracord here. Why? What can we use the paracord for? Well, it looks like you could tie things up with it. Yeah, Maybe definitely. So, so if you think about all the different things that you use throughout the day that you use cord for, like your shoelaces, tying things together, like it's really hard to find that in nature. You can make it in nature, but it's great if we've got some of this. So tying things together, um, you could create a string for a bow drill so you could actually make fire by rubbing sticks together. Right, should we cut the cord so it fits in the tin? Yeah, and can you see how the end of it's frayed now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can see inside, can you see all the fine lines? Yeah. So you can actually pull those ones out individually. We won't do it now, but if you, if we can pull those out individually and you can make, so that would be like four times the length and suddenly yeah. you've got a long bit, which is super strong because paracord is like the cords underneath parachutes. So it's designed to take a lot of weight. So we want to get rid of that fuzzy end. So we're going to take our tea light. Have you got your little tea lights and the lighter? Yeah. 
Yes, awesome. Okay, so whenever we use a lighter, uh, we wanna make sure that we've got our bowl of water close by, just in case we accidentally set fire to anything. We also need to make sure that our hair is tied back, as Shanti is doing here. Uh, with a hair bubble just because if you catch if your hair gets caught in the flame and this is the same round fire as well um, if you're building a fire just to make sure that your hair is tucked back out of the way so it doesn't uh, it doesn't catch a light and then just making sure that wherever you're making your fire that there's nothing flammable around nothing that it can catch on so with our with our tins we can actually use use the lid to help protect the ground from getting caught a light and when we use our lighter, you just need to always make sure you know where your thumb is in relation to the flame because it's very, very easy to, to burn your finger. Have you got uh, your tin foil? Shall we, let's make a, a bit of a shelter break for it, shall we? Yep. Okay, so if we do some of this. So we're just gonna create a bit of a wind break because uh, it's quite hard to get the candle to stay alight, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, it's a little campfire, isn't it? Toast on marshmallows on it. Let's see if we can get this to stay alight, shall we? Okay, so we've got a flame in there now, protected from the wind. So we just take our paracord, and you can see how it's gone a bit fuzzy there. So we just want to melt it down. So you have to be really careful because this is now because it's quite it's plastic really that we're melting here and if it gets stuck on your hands it can cause some really nasty burns so we just want to melt it down so we lose the fuzzy bits like that and once you've got that you see how it's all melted you really don't want that sticking on your fingers so you can then put it into the into the water cool it down and now it's not going to fray clever Okay, should we pack our stuff into our tins now? So with your, with your cordage, if you take your thumb and your finger, you can actually wrap it around like that. So if you wrap it around your thumb, it's called hanking. And you can actually create and it's just quite tidy. You can pack it into your, into your tin. And just wrap it around and just feed the end up underneath the, the wraps. There we go. So one last thing we need to do is make sure that our tins are watertight. We're here in Snowdonia, it rains a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> so we're going to make sure that they're waterproof. So if you have a look around the edge, we're just going to tape all the way around and make sure it's nice and watertight with our electrical tape. So if you guys want to grab the tape, if you want to waterproof your tin, we're then ready to go and survive. It's a great way of storing tape as well, isn't it? <laughs> you need extra tape. Right, let's go survive. For more details, including safety information, check out the Scouts website.